Hey there everyone, it's Joe. welcome back to my channel, and today we're going to be talking about my experiences with the Parisian Spring Cup that happened just this past weekend. And uh, let me tell you, it was quite the adventure. So I got up there on the Thursday and it was great, I got to see a few of the players, uh, you know, big shout out goes out to Noah who hosted me for the weekend, it was lovely. And then, you know, I was playtesting a good six or seven different decks on the night before to try and figure out what I wanted to play. And then, like, at the last minute, it just none of them were working. And all these different ideas that I come up with that are really cool, just I couldn't quite flesh out well enough, certainly not for an event like that. So I decided to go to, to the main event on the Saturday with a deck that I knew well, which was Mono Earth. And I will show you just on the right here, you know, what I was playing in that deck. And I didn't do too badly, like, uh, considering the lack of practice I've had recently, because I, in all honesty, I haven't been able to play the game as much as I'd like. I don't have very many people to play with anymore, being realistic, so as much as I really, really love the game, and I want to continue to do all these wonderful videos and stuff for you, the reason that I've been doing so many videos catered towards kind of newer players and things like that is because I've not been able to play at the level that I once did. So in order for me to kind of get back to that stage, it's going to take a little while for me to pick it back up. But at the same time, I went with something I knew and I actually performed a lot better than I thought I'd, I was going to, which I went 4-3, which isn't terrible. I at least won more than I lost. Um, but, I, you know, I, I know Mono Earth pretty well at this point. I've played it pretty much since Opus 2, at least on and off. So I know how the deck works. So as I said, you can see on the right here what I went into the deck and the deck was very much kind of centered around Graviton, which put in a lot of work over the course of the day, as well as Prish, who honestly I used to really, really like, but as I play it more and more, I'm starting to realise I really just don't like the card as much as I thought I would. It's a great card against in certain matchups. Like the reason that I put her in the deck is because I thought against sort of mono lightning she'd do very, very well. But that was a misconception on my part because the thought process was that removal doesn't get around her very well, but unfortunately dulling her does. <laughs> so and because my matchup is quite positive against mono ice anyway, which is a very, very popular deck in the format, it you know, I figured that I could, you know work around that but unfortunately I think that in order to have that matchup really solidify you need to have both the Black Mage from Opus 4 which is in the deck and Prish out at the same time. I'm not going to go over every card choice that I've made in this deck because a lot of players who are watching this video will already know what a lot of these cards do but there are a couple of points I wanted to highlight. Prish is one of those cards that, like I said, is really, really good against removal, uh, but, you know, killing her doesn't really do a lot. And late game, she can be very, very good. And luckily, you know, I actually had a feature match in my third round, which I asked very politely not to be put on a feature match because I'm very rusty and I didn't want to embarrass myself. But they did it anyway. And luckily, I did actually like to think that I played very, very well and I didn't make very many errors during my game. I don't know if there's a video on demand for it if you want to go and watch it, but I'm sure that if you check out Square Enix's Twitch streams, there may well be it on the, it may well be on there. And it was a, a, a Prish off in that game. But as I said, Prish is a card that I would like to take out of this deck in favour of more consistency. One of the biggest plays that I made a lot of was using Graviton and then playing a Ralbarn and stacking Opus 1 Hecaton Kyra on top of it to blow up one of their backups, one of their forwards, and still be left with a guy standing at the end of it, because Graviton will obviously work off of Hecaton Kyra to boost Ralbarn past the point where he would kill himself. That play won me numerous games, and I kind of wish I'd had the third Ralbarn in the deck in order to kind of capitalise on that, because I didn't realise, with you know my limited testing, just how powerful and potent that play was. Uh, I'd also like to play a second Shantotto, because the, the trouble with Earth is that there are so many powerful backups in that colour that you can't fit them all in. And because I was running Prish, I didn't really want to remove my cards from the game as much, but I think having at least one Shantotto is mandatory in most decks that run Earth, unless you're running the forward one, which I have tried in the past and I was, it was less successful than this one. But I honestly think that just removing the Prishes from this deck and making more consistent plays across the board was the way that I would have liked to have taken it. I still maintain that I think that the two Enacro and three Ingus is the correct amount of power boosters for this particular deck because Graviton serves a similar purpose and Ingus can keep Raoban alive by himself by way of his activated ability. I also really, really enjoyed using her Opus 1 Hecaton Kaya. I honestly think that the card is very, very strong. And Opus 3 Deleter, um, Opus 4 Deleter, sorry, is also a card that I really, really liked. You know, alongside cards like Graviton and Wall, who is just amazing, everyone who's played Wall knows just how good this card is. 
you know, Delita alongside those cards gets very big very quickly and he gets very scary for 3 CP. Your opponent is never quite sure when to block him and I really maintain a recommendation for this Delita. I thought he was brilliant. Um, this deck is catered quite nicely to the Mono Ice matchup, but unfortunately it suffers quite badly to Mono Water. It, you know, the format we have right now is very Rock, Paper, Scissors, where Ice will beat Water but lose to Earth, Earth will beat um, Ice but lose to Water, and Water will beat Earth but lose to Ice. So it's kind of one of those toss-ups as to whether you're going to win or lose to those particular matchups. Monsters was extremely popular during the Paris event, and this deck didn't cater to that matchup as well as I would have liked. But again, that's down to me not having practiced enough. Um, you know, the deck itself is fine. You know, like I said, I don't particularly like Prish anymore, but other people do. You see Prish topping events pretty regularly. But I, you know, in, in hindsight, I wish that I'd changed it. But yeah, that's enough from that deck. I mean, I had a great day. I was very nervous going into it, to be honest, because I wasn't sure how my lack of practice would come across. And I was being, I was very honest, and I said that I haven't played the game as much as I would have liked. But I did, I did a lot better than I thought I was going to do. I didn't top, you know, but I was never going to, in all honesty. It wouldn't have been, you know, in all honesty, it wouldn't have been right for me to have topped if there's all these players that play every day and they practice every every single day, and then there's me, who doesn't, and, you know, I, I was actually very pleased with how I did. Um, and then, you know, Saturday night we were all very, very tired, and, you know, we went to, we just went to bed, and then Sunday, Sunday I played in the side event, or the, the main side event, which was the Onion Knights Parade, and it's something that they're planning on doing at like, every one of these sort of spring, summer, winter, autumn cups. And I was a bit sceptical going into it, because the format is, you can play any deck you like, as long as you have five of each colour of the three colours that are representative of the season. So for spring, they had Wind, Water and Earth. So you had to have five wind cards, five water cards, and five earth cards in your deck. The rest can be whatever you like. So most people obviously wanted to go with a wind, water, earth deck. Some people, I mean, I saw a couple of people playing literally mono-coloured, like ice, just splashing in like Star Sibyl and Chantotto, Ishtala, started draw power and stuff like that. It's like it was quite funny to watch. And I played a deck that I was shown in a regional previously by Mr. Robert Phillips, who was an absolute riot all weekend. That man is so hilarious. If you haven't met him at an event, I encourage you to go and talk to him. He's extremely funny, and I love the guy to bits. But um, he showed me a deck at a regional I went to a while ago, and it's this deck, and I hope he doesn't mind me showing this, but I think the deck is so awesome that everybody has to see it. And, you know, as I say, you can see the deck on the right now. And it's a combo deck all surrounded around El Nash. Now, bear in mind when I reviewed Opus 5, I said that El Nash was gimmicky and silly. And he is. <laughs> But in this particular deck, it's actually extremely potent. The whole point of this deck is to just draw cards and just mince through your deck as quickly as you can just to get anything on the board. It doesn't matter what it is. And you just eventually end up going from zero damage to seven instantly by way of things like Bart's and Eld Nash. And things like Ishtola is in the deck to stop your opponent from making that go off. I also went 4-3 in the event with this, however, because of the format, I, you know, I, I'm not somebody that sits around and blames my luck when it comes to losing games, however, the number of times I saw EX Burst sodding Yuna turn up in those games was painful. It's to be expected that you, EX Burst Yuna was going to be popular in that particular event, you have Yuna and Chaos Walker of the Wheel in that format, It's gonna, it, she's going to be popular, and in monster decks that particular combo is always going to be popular, and Tricolor Monsters was probably the most popular deck that day. However, I think if I were to change anything in this deck, I would like to find a way of putting a couple of copies of Wall in the deck, or maybe even Opus 3 Aerith, so that your guys can't get targeted by that sodding card. Yuna used to be one of my favourite cards in the game, and now I've look, Yuna and Prish used to be two of my favourite cards in the game, and now I am so done with them. I'm so over Yuna and Prish. Those are, they are no longer my waifus, you guys can keep them. I think I need to move on to a very, very different playstyle. Because um, this is the thing, it's like having played a Mono Earth on a Saturday, I felt a bit deflated at the end of it because I'm like, I'm more known for kind of thinking outside the box and I need to go back to my roots, I think. Stop playing meta, stop playing things that I think everybody wants me to play and just play my way because when I play my way, I think I actually perform better. Um, and then on Sunday, by being inspired by this deck that Robert showed me, I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed that day and whether the fact that I lost a few of the games and I didn't top that event either didn't bother me, not in the slightest. I just, to be honest, the only reason I really cared about doing well in the, to begin with is because I didn't want to be a disappointment to you guys. You know, all you guys have been so supportive of me since day one and there was a time where I was performing very well and now I'm at a point where I kind of 
less able to play, I still want to be there and do and make you guys proud. So it's like, I hope that I can still continue to do that with these videos and I hope that I get to go to more events and I hope that I can build up a new community in my local area because that's what we lost unfortunately. And that's where I'm, you know, I am inspired to try and build it all back up. So I'm actually very thankful that I went to the Paris event for that reason and I did really really enjoy myself and I'm very thankful to all of the people that kind of came up to me and they were sort of they, they, you know people talk to me even when people come up to you, talk to you in a completely different country it's a very very strange experience but I'm very thankful for it and you know I have so many friends that I'd like to give shout outs to and stuff you know Anthony Noah Rob Joshua who won the event and congratulations to him he is one of the sweetest guys and I have all the time in the world for Joshua so very well done on his deck and his deck planning is literal perfection I'd love to get him on the channel at some point just to show his insights into what you guys do but I do believe that he's on the Crystal Tower this weekend with Alex and Barn who if you wanted to go and check that out I'll leave a link in the description box below so if you want to go and hear some insights from some other players then there's that uh, there's tons of people I like there's so many players that I, I got to know much better uh, over the course of the weekend and that's the reason that I play these games It's the social aspect. It's the most important thing for me and I you know Doing well and getting better at the game It should come naturally when you've got a good group of people to play with and that's the bit that I'm really really thankful for well, The one thing that did happen over the weekend that I will quickly go over though because it was an interesting Experience to say the least is on the after the Sunday night. I went out for dinner and drinks with a couple of friends and stuff like that and uh, things ran on a little bit later than I anticipated and I didn't get back to where I was staying or where I was supposed to be staying until about three o'clock in the morning. Now unfortunately the bit like it didn't quite go to plan and I ended up a bit lost. <laughs> so I ended up there was it was something quite romantic about wandering the streets of Paris in the middle of the night uh, it's very, very old Hollywood, and you guys know me very well. I'm a, I have a bit of a flair for the dramatic, so these things, you know, it was quite nice and of its own right. However, it could have done without raining when I was only wearing a t-shirt and only my bag. So <laughs> there was that. But I mean, I'm home. I'm safe. It, you know, I got back to where I got back to the house eventually, and it was all fine. And I got home, and it was all good. And it's a story to tell, and those are my favourite things to do. But I'm going to come away from this and I want to, I feel kind of energised, which is exactly what I needed. You know, I want to start doing the streaming again and start getting more consistent with that. I want to start doing more competitive videos for, for Final Fantasy TCG as well as kind of getting back to what I was doing with my phone games and stuff like that. So, you know, this is as much a vlog as it is just a quick showcase of the decks that I played over the weekend. Um, but I'm not very good at, you know, I mean, you've seen the vlogs that I've made in the past. I'm not particularly good at be holding up a, a camera phone and kind of talking to my phone. I'm much better when I'm in a, you know, enclosed environment talking to my actual camera. But anyways, if you guys were at the Paris Spring Cup, then leave a comment in the box below and see if you, you know, let me know how it was for you. If you, you know, saw any of the feature matches, tell me what you thought. Um, I'm pretty sure I made a mistake or two during my game, so don't come for me too hard for that. Um, and that's it for the for this video. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed every, uh, enjoyed the show, and I'll be back very very soon with some new videos and deck lists for you guys. So I'll speak to you guys soon. Thanks again. See you later. Bye.